Yes, I'm, I'm Kirti Rana Singh, huh? and I work for a company called Trada Technology, which is part of the, the uh, bigger Trada group. And I work there as a senior structural engineer. And my role is basically, at the moment, help the industry with um, uh, converting to Eurocode 5, uh, most importantly. But at the same time, I help with um, the companies to do their structural engineering calculations and get their products certified to European standards. Okay, thank you. Um, um, can you just tell us a little bit about your involvement with the Eurocodes? Well, um, about two years ago, I started delivering Eurocode 5 lectures uh, together with Institute of Structural Engineers. My idea was uh, structural engineers were at that time were not fully aware of the implications of Eurocode 5. So I went in with uh, an engineer's perspective trying to understand how uh, the calculations should be done. And I had some uh, backing up calculations, um, sample calculations to help them with. So that was about the time when they wanted to do their own calculations. So I, I timed it to, to match with that. So my involvement so far with Eurocode 5 is basically teaching Eurocode 5. In fact, I'm a visiting lecturer at Surrey University as well. Um, and I, I do a lot of training courses, seminars, workshops uh, with the help of TRADA and Institute of Structural Engineers as well. Okay. And do, do you, are you involved with one of the um, BSI committees at all as well? Um, not directly, but um, as you know, uh, TRADA is, is um, contributing a lot to Eurocode 5. We have two members representing TRADA and I do most of the technical work behind the scenes to help them to come to the uh, Euro, uh, Eurocode committees. Yes. Thank you. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about the challenges that people are facing with the change over to Eurocode? I think, well, I, I don't particularly like the word challenge. It's an opportunity, but I, I understand what you ask by uh, challenges. Yes, there are, there are uh, many challenges. To start with, Eurocode 5 is not a standard that we were used to uh, look at. It's more like a, a, a technical document or a research document, I would say. It doesn't contain any of the material strength properties, for example. So the challenges that the end user of Eurocode 5, the, the structural engineer, has to face with is, is finding the, the relevant values and do all these uh, number crunching. Like There are a lot of um, equations and expressions given in Eurocode 5, unlike the previous one, uh, the 5268, which was uh, basically a uh, tabulated and, and table-oriented approach. So Eurocode 5, the challenges are finding the correct values to use with Eurocode 5, and then doing the, the uh, correct number crunching required. Okay. What do you think companies can do to um overcome these challenges and what are you doing as a company? I think um, it, it's, it's making your employees aware of what the changes are. So it depends on, on what, what, what sort of a company you are. If you're a structural engineering consultancy, for example, uh, um, you have to get your engineers trained in Eurocode 5. They cannot, I, I, this is my personal experience, you cannot just go in and open a Eurocode 5 and start doing calculations. BS5268 was, was entirely different. Even if you're doing it for the first time, within a couple of hours, you could grasp the whole thing and then do your uh, designs correct. But this Eurocode 5 is so involved, so you have to get your engineers tra trained. On the other side, if you are a supplier or a manufacturer, then you need to know all the intricacies of Eurocode 5 and all the accompanying codes which we call harmonized standards. So if you, if you are keen to get your product into the market with proper certification, then you need to read a lot about these uh, uh, standards and then, and then do what is required to get your products certified. So two things really. Engineers, they need to train themselves. Uh, product manufacturers and suppliers, they need to read a lot and understand what it is all about. And um, how do you think Eurocode 5 differs from the actual British standards they're going to replace? Um, as I said previously, Eurocode 5 is more like a technical document where uh, the, the principles and the fundamentals are given, but um, hardly any help is given for you to do your calculation from A to Z. So the previous one was more like a technical manual, if I may use the word. With, with little experience, you can open up a, a, a 
perform a British standard and, and do your uh, designs. That's one thing. On, on, on the other hand, Eurocode 5 requires the support of other literature. Like, for example, you cannot do a design without the property values. Then where, where do you get these values from? 5268 contain these values within the code itself. So it's just one document on your desk. You can do your designs. Eurocode 5 is not. So that's, that's a, a bigger difficulty then. So you, you think that the training is essential when using Eurocode 5? Training is essential. And I, I think so far, uh, only the bigger companies have thought of doing proper training. Um, I've been doing a lot of training uh, for about two years now. Uh, some of the, the, the individuals, like um, small practitioners, they, they complain that the amount of uh, information that they have to absorb within a short period of time is, is so much that it's not going to happen. But, but my, my view is quite different. I'm a structural engineer. If I want to survive in this industry for the f future, then I have to get on with it. So Eurocode 5 is no exception. You either learn it or, I don't know, you have to be uh, left behind. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about Eurocode 5, all the, the various parts and how they fit together? Yes. Eurocode 5, like, like all the other um, Eurocodes, is um, looking at the particular material called timber. And it is uh, made up of three parts. Part 1.1 one, one is about the, the requirements for general construction. Part 2 is about fire requirements and uh, the, the part two proper is, is about bridge engineering. And it is supported by uh, three national annexes as well for each one of these parts. Um, so it, 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 it is also supported by various other standards like what I was mentioning previously, the harmonized standards for products, like um, say if you are designing in, in uh, softwood timbers uh, with uh, rectangular cross sections, there is a harmonized product standard for that. And if you're uh, thinking of doing designs in glue lamp, then it's supported by another harmonized standard. So all in all, you might be looking at something like 50 standards altogether uh, before you can do any, any meaningful design. Okay, and how did you find your, uh, your personal experience of getting used to Eurocode 5? Um, I have to be honest here, but at the same time, I cannot say that um, um, it was a difficult thing. It was difficult at the, uh, at the beginning to read all what is required and read all the supporting uh, uh, documents as well. One of the difficulties I found was, um, in fact, um, uh, uh, finding all the, the supporting standards. So once you have all, all these things, whether you, uh, through BSI or, or by uh, subscribing to any, any subscription services, you can, you can get hold of all these uh, standards required. So once you get the, the, the initial feel for it, it's not difficult at all. It's just that for each design that you have to do, you have to do loads of calculations. That's where the difficulty is. Otherwise, it's, um, I mean, I cannot insult my profession by saying it's a difficult one. It's not difficult, but it's time taking and, and, and time consuming. Well, once you actually got used to using the Euro codes, do you find them quite beneficial in comparison to the British standard? Um, yes, in a way, because when I started, the, the first thing that I did was every part that I understood, I put them into a computer package so, so you could reuse your calculations. So in that sense, Eurocode 5, the, um, the, the formula given in Eurocode 5 is most helpful compared to uh, BS5268 where there were a lot of tables without, without not much background about the tables. So once you use one calculation once, you can repeat it quite, quite easily with the use of a computer. So that's one of the key things about Eurocode 5. Okay. Uh, do you have any words of advice for people in the industry that are quite worried about using the Eurocodes? I, th I think my, my key um, um, advice is that there's, there's plenty of information around. You, you can search online. You can come to Eurocode's website. There is the uh, Institute of Structural Engineers, BSI, and Institute of Civil Engineers, uh, a collaborative effort called Eurocode's website. There's lots of information there about your particular field of interest. Say, if you're interested in uh, steel, there's, there's lots of uh, information there.